Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Tuesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope you're having a great week. I hope this week has just started beautifully for you. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So what's up? How you doing? I'm back. We're trying to get the videos rolling, the lives rolling again after a little bit of a downward month last month with everything that kind of went on. But we're, we're back, baby. And today, I'm going to take you back to Joyceville. I'm going to give you a more in-depth view of my experience on 3A from 2006 to 2008. Now before that, I had been in serious like provincial jails, but the only federal jail I had ever been in, aside from Millhaven, which was serious, but I was in reception. So although a serious place, I was only there for a few months and then I was off to Fembrook to do comfortable time. Now. In 2006, I got caught with some weed in Fembrook and they shipped me to the Ville. And this is my where my real prison experience began. Because Joyceville is a high medium security penitentiary, one step under max, and at the time was a very serious joint. Like, think about it. I was there at that stretch from November 2006 till December 2008. And in that stretch, I saw two full-on attempted murders on my range. I saw a piping, many fights, a funny one, which I'm going to tell you about in this video. And it, it was just a serious place. But at the same time, one of the best places... I did time in all the years that I did time. Now, first off, I landed on a range with my brother, who was a lifer, who the prior 11 or 12 years, I saw him one time in the visiting room. So that was great being able to have a reunion with a family member that I hadn't seen in a long time. Although in weird, crazy circumstances, which is not the way I would typically want that to happen. But it is what it is. At least I got to spend time with my brother and uh, build the relationship with them that I have now today, which I cherish, like every relationship in my family. Now, Joyceville was a different place at that time, okay? It wasn't like laughy, laughy, jokey, jokey, everybody messing around. It was very serious. Everybody was really respectful and on their P's and Q's. And it wasn't a sign of being soft or not being tough. It was literally just that the way that people carried themselves. They carried themselves like serious men. Now, later on in my time, even in my time at Joyceville, I felt like that kind of changed a bit. But the first couple years, it was a bunch of serious dudes, big dudes, and guys that weren't really about that playing around. Now, when the dude got poked up beside my cell, I remember waking up trying to open the door and it was locked and I had earplugs in the night before because I just can't, I'm a light sleeper, noise kills me, right? So I had earplugs in and when I woke up, I went to try to open the door and it wouldn't open. So I look out and I see that the freaking whole block is locked down. Somebody in one of the other cells told me that buddy in the cell beside me got poked up and to look in the cell, and uh, the hatch was taken off his cell. I reached a mirror out and I looked into his cell and the mattress had a big pool of like black blood in the middle, which is how you know he got hit in some vital areas. And he got poked up like 20, 22 times or something like that. All head, all neck, maybe a couple shoulder smashes. But when he walked off the range, he looked like DMX on the flesh of my flesh blood of my blood cover. Um, it was a crazy day, although I didn't see that. 
Then there was another beating that I saw, which I've told you about in a video, where a guy got smashed all the way up the range and then got poked up eight times through his back. Deep ice picks, bing, bing, hitting the floor, like punctured lungs, lucky his heart wasn't hit. Very serious, serious attack. The crazy thing about that was the guy came back to the range after because it was a mistaken attack. Some stuff had been box teethed. His name was brought up accidentally because he had the same name as somebody else had a nickname and it confused things. People jumped to conclusion, jumped the gun and poked him up. And the only reason why he got poked was because he defended himself when they tried to call him a box teeth because who isn't going to do that, right? But this one dude spitting wrong information created the whole drama. Now, none of it was intentional, despite the fact that it was stupid on that guy's case, but he never ended up getting it. And that guy came back to the range who did get it and lived with his attackers for quite a long time. It was a crazy, crazy time. I even told him, you're a better man than me. I don't know if I'd be able to like sit here and stare at these dudes and not move or do something, sucker punch, like something. But he had put his word on it to some of the older guys on the range who had him brought back onto the block and he kept his word. I'm sure if he saw one of those guys in the streets, it would have been problems. Now, this range had 17 lifers, 17 lifers. I think there was like 38 guys on the range. 36, something like that. It was a big, long range, right? And 17 of them were lifers, guys doing a life sentence. So you know already that the attitude and the way that people carry themselves is going to be super important. Now, although the range wasn't the most serious range in the jail, because you always had like the young guy ranges where guys are just getting sent off all the time. But it was never a range that you would want to come live on and play. People were respectful. People were cool. We had a great block. But you came in and messed up the chemistry and the Jew on the range. You are cooked. You are going to get smashed and sent off the block. I watched it happen many times. Now, one thing you'll, you'll learn if you ever go to prison, which I hope you don't, but I do do these videos for a reason because people do go to prison. There's a lot of guys that are going to tell you they're this when they're really that. And that leads to the story of the fight. Now, there was this old dude on our block, a lifer guy. Tall, lanky, goofy looking dude, right? But in on two M charges. So typically those guys, especially older guys, are given a certain level of respect. Now... He wasn't in on any actual assaults, but he was, guys ended up finding out that his cases was, one was his wife, who apparently he had like, and discarded the body parts. And then he, I guess, was doing time, met some other girl. That girl was like visiting him, doing trailers, and number two... And I think put in concrete and certain dudes that were hanging out with him felt a certain type of way about him not being honest with his crimes. Now, what happens? You got this like 60 year old, six foot four, lanky, goofy looking dude. And this young, like 225 pound, kind of jacked, crazy farmer dude. What do you think happens? I, I, I'll say one thing. The old man squared off and he landed one shot, but he took a savage beat. Like it was, what, pop, 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 boom, hit the ground. Pop, pop, pop. Get up. Get up. Pop. Get up. Square off again. And at the time, there was no cameras on the back of the ranges, okay? In Joyceville. So if you were in the back fighting, you weren't leaving until that fight was done. Until guys on the range felt like that fight was done. There was no escape. When you live like a tight community like that, which you have to in prison. Because 
If you're not tight with the guys you live with, if there's no level of respect or trust, then there's problems. You have a bunch of alpha dudes. Once you get to the higher security pens, it's alpha dudes typically. They may not be the most alpha dude in the prison or in the jail, right? But they're alpha from their neighborhood, from where they're from, and they're used to getting what they want and acting how they want. So you have all these alpha from all their little different areas. Some might be from a, some a serious hood or some serious set and be a serious killer. And one guy might just be some crazy ass farmer, right? Who can just smash and just doesn't care. Has zero fear of death, right? The reality is that it's all elf. It's all alphas. So you have to have a certain attitude, demeanor, carry yourself in a certain way to be looked at as an equal. And that's not pumping out your chest, acting tough, running around the yard, smashing people. That's not trying to intimidate people or act like a gangster like it is in provincial. Because that's what it is, right? In provincial, it's intimidation. The strongest, toughest guy on the block, he's going to have the most say. And if he's not the toughest, he's going to have the most people willing to ride for him. That guy's going to have the most say. In the pen, typically that guy's still going to have the most say on a range. But nobody's going to be excluded except maybe a one-two guy. Right? Things are, are, are taken to a vote on ranges. Guys have lots of meet and talk about things as a range before just certain things happen. That's just how the pen works or worked anyways when I started doing time. Seeing this old guy get his face smashed in was a harsh reminder to me that in prison there is no rules. There is no anybody feeling sorry for you. This is a, like a, I'm telling you a grandpa. Getting his fucking face smashed. And he's not an actual assaulter. He's just a domestic serial killer, I guess you could call him. Piece of shit. Deserved the beating that he got. But it definitely opened my eyes, as did a lot of things when I was living on 3A. Yes, I built an amazing relationship with my brother, which was dope. And I'll cherish... I probably never would have had the relationship I have now, even if he was on the street. Because when do you typically get to spend two and a half years with somebody in your family? Two and a half years. Like, that's hard. Two and a half years, 12 hours a day, you're kind of with each other. We worked in the same place inside. Like, you're really getting to know each other. But aside from that, it was lesson after lesson after lesson for me. It was eye-opener after eye-opener after eye-opener. Now, I had lots of fun times, lots of parties, lots of laughs. Met some really cool dudes, man. Met some really solid stand-up guys that I consider my friends even to this day. But at the end of the day, you see people losing their lives, whether it's to overdoses. Now, I never saw anybody get killed specifically in Joyceville, but I saw suicides. I saw guys overdose and die. I saw a guy drink bad brew and die. So guys are still losing their life from bad decision making and consequences, right? Joyceville 3A, 2006 to 2008, was definitely some of my best time. I never got in a single fight. I lived it up while I was there. You could smoke at the time. So there's like a flea market every canteen day. You go down to the yard. There's blankets in the gym. Guys have TVs for sale. Video games. Cornography. They have clothes. Fitted cap. Everything for sale. Guys are just hustling. Trying to grind. Trying to make money. It's like a flea market. Sports were crazy. But a very serious place. Nonetheless. Multiple stabbings. Multiple fights, multiple beatings, jumpings, multiple lockdowns for weapon searches, which can take from seven days 
to like 10 days, depending, unless you're like the first block, because what they do is they search, they let that block out, and it just is what it is. You're the luck of the draw. If you're the first range or the last range, you're the, you know, the donkey. But nothing really good comes from you being in prison, you know? Yes, I learned a lot, and I think I'm a better person now that because I went through what I went through in my life, I feel like I'm wiser and I have more to offer. But I don't know what would have happened if I never went to prison. The sky's the limit. And that's the thing. You limit yourself. You stunt your ability for that growth. Once you get to a certain point of criminalized, kind of, you're, you're kind of screwed. You can't travel to the U.S. There's a lot of things you're going to be excluded from. Opportunities you are going to be excluded from. Especially nowadays, you got to get to the U.S. if you want to make real money. Now, you can be successful in Canada for sure, right? But if you want to be like a content creator or, or somebody who's making money online, like you're going to have much more opportunity in the U.S. than in Canada. And that, that's just a fact. And guess what? I can't do that because of those decisions I made that landed me on 3A Joyce. Now, out of my seven years there, I, I say I probably did five of it on 3A. And maybe the best time I did as an adult, it was crazy. Like, I was institutionalized at one point. Like, when I got a parole violation, I was walking back in like, yo! That's how you know you got a problem, Doc. So you know you got a problem. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys. So you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my fingers, nobody goes to prison. Then that's what I do. But that's not a reality. 2022 is here. It's crazy. Ribs is touching. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do to survive. And sometimes that can land you in jail or in prison. Hopefully, these videos can give you a little bit of information to help keep you safe. Understand how to move. Play your role, play your position, not get yourself caught up and have those guys on the inside not be affected drastically by you coming in, not knowing how to move, right? It, it, it's just all together a good situation if you have to go in to watch these videos first. But the whole goal is to stop that. No prison, no jail. If you can help it, no addiction, there's so much more to life than that. Just giving yourself away. You know, that's all you're doing is giving yourself away. 3A, although not a horrible time of my life, despite the fact I was locked up, and I had some sentimental value because of the relationship I have with my brother, but I still wish I wasn't there. I still wish I could go back and knock those 17 years off and start over, but I can't. So... Take my advice, if you're watching this, you've never been in prison or jail, just get a goddamn job. Work hard and save, and you'll be all right. I'm telling you, the people that work hard, save, invest properly, those are the people that build real wealth and are, are able to like really take care of their family and establish themselves in a household and all that stuff. Keep that in mind. Prison just not worth it. Love each and every one of you. The new Mac.